Hello and welcome to a Christmas worship service from the Northern Baptist Association team. I hope you're feeling festive in spite of the ongoing restrictions. We pray this Christmas that God will make you aware of his presence. God who is Emmanuel with us in and through Jesus Christ. In this service we'll simply share a few reflections, prayers and songs put together by the association team and we pray that it will be a blessing to you as part of your Christmas celebrations. We'll begin with a prayer which is written by the East Midlands Baptist Association. Let's pray together. Generous God, we come to you, the God who comes to us. We give you praise that you came in creation founding the world and fashioning human beings into your likeness, calling a people into being and walking alongside them, come what may. You came in Jesus Christ, in self-giving love and in resurrection life. You came by your spirit, making your disciples drunk on your grace. And you've come to us through friend, and stranger in joy and in pain, opening our eyes to the reality of the Messiah and playing in 10,000 places. Help us this Christmas to celebrate your presence as we seek to make known your love to the world and as we look with hope to your new creation, which will break in when you come again. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
first reading is from the Passion Translation, Luke chapter 4, beginning at verse 14. Then Jesus, armed with the Holy Spirit's power, returned to Galilee, and his fame spread throughout the region. He taught in the synagogues, and they glorified him. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been raised, he went into the synagogue as he always did on the Sabbath day. When Jesus came to the front to read the scriptures, they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and read where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he has anointed me to be a hope for the poor, freedom for the broken-hearted, and new eyes for the blind, and to preach to prisoners that you are set free. I have come to share the message of Jubilee, for the time of God's great acceptance has begun. And he read this as he rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the minister and sat down. Everyone stared at Jesus, wondering what he was about to say. Then he added, these scriptures came true today in front of you. This reading is from Romans 8, beginning at verse 14. The mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty, leading you back into the fear of never being good enough, but you have received the spirit of full acceptance, enfolding you into the family of God. And you will never feel orphaned, for as he rises up within us, our spirits join him in saying the words of tender affection, beloved father. For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as he whispers into our innermost being, you are God's beloved child. And since we are his true children, we qualify to share all his treasures, for indeed we are heirs of God himself. And since we are joined to Christ, we also inherit all that he is and all that he has we will experience being co-glorified with him, provided that we accept his suffering as our own. In the image you have just seen, the top word is acceptance. The other day, this word acceptance leapt out at me as I thought of this Christmas. Many of us will accept with joy this year our gifts, whether given in person or received at a distance. What are you hoping for? Now, look at the image again. It implies that to have acceptance or to exercise it, you need to be surrounded by security. But to possess this gift, it seems enables one to have inner warmth, empathy, to stroke and comfort others in trouble. Is that true for the Christmas characters in the Jesus story? This is what struck me. So many of them have troubles of their own and security was in short supply. Some were elderly and it seemed unlikely to get what they had desired. Some were young and what was happening to them is not what they had wanted. And later they are joined by the isolated, the unknowns, the vulnerable, and last of all, wealthy travellers, all caught up in waiting and expectation. It was then God stepped in with hope, gifts and promises. God's arrival changed life, changed waiting into hope, changed sorrow into joy, changed desperation into peace. We know the stories only too well, and it is therefore easy to miss this truth, that the hope, gifts and promises are provided, yes, but can only be accessed through acceptance. Without acceptance, there is no real Christmas, no God with us. 
So Zachariah and Elizabeth had always wanted a child, but it had never happened for them. This couple in old age continued faithfully to serve, remain upright and blameless. And then on duty at the temple one day, Zachariah is given a promise of a child. Naturally, it causes him to state the truth that he knows. How can this be? And then he hears the answer. And the answer is that he will be struck dumb. He accepts the silence imposed upon him for nine months until he can say, his name is John. And Elizabeth, she accepts the confinement, but in it experiences the visit of her cousin Mary, who is also pregnant. She and the child within her are filled with the Holy Spirit and in a leap of joy declare, she says, blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. And Mary accepts that nothing is impossible with God and verbalises it. Always a good idea with God. May it be to me as you have said, she responds. And Joseph, puzzled by what he appears to be an unfaithful fiancé, is all prepared to be compassionate and divorce Mary quietly. Then in his dreams, he hears God's word and he accepts three things. First, that this is not the nightmare that he thought. Secondly, this child Jesus was special for the people of this world. And thirdly, that he would need to remain celibate until the baby was born. <laughs> A nine month hold on the honeymoon. How is that for acceptance and trust? And there are the shepherds in shock from an angelic visitation, but they have a choice. Stay where they are and ignore the message or give it full acceptance and hurry to Bethlehem. And to do that, one of them at least had to accept that he stayed behind to watch their flocks. What a joy when they came back glorifying God and telling him and everyone else what they had seen and heard was true. Finally, the wise men, seeking a remarkable star, decide to follow their reckoning. Accepting two years, journeying to find the one born to be king, bowing down to the child with their prophetic gifts, and then the journey home. A far longer one than they planned, because they sought to avoid Herod's trap and give the Holy Family time to escape to Egypt. And for Joseph and Mary, that was just one more acceptance as they entered self-exile. So as we prepare for Christmas, what do we hear? What is the Lord saying to you? What commission is he calling you to? What change is he birthing in you? Is the Spirit willing to embrace the acceptance it will call for? Why not take up the words of Jesus' namesake, Joshua? As for me and my household, he says, we will serve the Lord. Or perhaps Jesus' own definition of acceptance, where security is lacking, but hope and trust are everything. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. As you make your response, may you find blessing and joy through this season and into 2021. God bless you.
The Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus meets his disciples after he's been raised from the dead. And he says these words, As the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. Peace be with you. And that takes us all the way back to the Incarnation, to Christmas. Jesus sends you and me in the same way that the Father sent him. So, of course, that begs the question, well, how did the Father send Jesus? How was it that that happened? The first thing to say is it was an act of love, utter and complete love. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Jesus was sent because of the love of God. He was sent with the love of God. He was sent to bring the love of God. Everything was motivated and infused by love. As Charles Wesley puts it in one of his hymns, Jesus emptied himself of all, of all but love. He was totally full of love, even though he gave up many of the vestiges of divinity. Second thing is, he, he came all the way on that journey to where we are. God didn't broadcast by a megaphone from the heavens and saying, come up here to me. Sort yourselves out. Get yourselves holy. Come and find me up in heaven. No, God came all the way from where God is to where we are. He became utterly like us. Took on human form, human flesh and blood. Became incarnated. The word became flesh. He became one of us. So it was a journey that God undertook. He came all the way to us so that we can come all the way to him. And then a third thought is it's a, it's a journey or an act of humility. That God withheld in Jesus a lot of his power and might, his awesome presence. Remember in the Old Testament you couldn't look on God and live. And yet God veils that brightness and glory in Jesus. God is an awesome judge. And yet in Jesus, he says, I've come not to condemn the world, but to save the world. God is able to do all things. But actually in Jesus, even though he did lots of miracles, he withheld a lot of his power. Particularly at the very beginning, when he relies utterly and completely on his mother, Mary, to care for him, to feed him, to look after him. He is utterly dependent on others. He becomes not just a human being, but the most weak and vulnerable of human beings. So Jesus says, in the light of all that, we are to go in this same manner. So this Christmas... It's a time for reflecting on how Jesus came, but it's also a time for being sent out on mission. It's a time to understand better what is the mission that God calls us to. And as we get towards the end of this year and look forward to a new year, a new year when we do have hopes of uh, a life less dominated by the uh, COVID, 
coronavirus, that we have the hope of uh, living more free and less restricted lives when the virus, we hope, will make a change. Sorry, when the, the vaccine, not the virus, <laughs> uh, will make a change to how we live. As we get to this threshold, let us consider again what it means to go as the Son was sent by the Father. And I guess what it means is we don't stay in our nice, comfortable silos, our church buildings, and say to people, come to us. God got out of his box and came to where we were. So actually this year when we've been out of our buildings for most of it, we've been more incarnational. We've been going more as Jesus went. So let's keep that mindset and attitude and approach as we continue into 2021. Let's be full of the love of God. Let's seek that love of God. Let's ask that love of God to fill us. We'll never do any mission if we can't be bothered to do it, if we're not motivated. Mission is hard. Mission is sacrificial. Mission is costly. But if we are full of the love of God, then we will go. Because we have compassion for other people. We see the need. We realise that people are missing out on all that God has for them. And let's go all the way, wherever God would send us, and do it in humility. It's not that we have all the answers. It's not that we tell other people exactly what to do and how to behave. We come alongside them and we allow God to work in the relationship, in the meeting. And it takes just as much listening as it does speaking. It takes as much giving as it does receiving, but sometimes receiving back as well. Humility is the hallmark of Christian mission, not power and domination. So, may God guide you this Christmas as to who he would send you to, how he would send you, what he might do, and fill you with that love and compassion to motivate you to get out and share the good news, to demonstrate the good news, to be the good news to those that you meet. God bless you this Christmas. God use you this Christmas. God make his church serve and go in mission as God himself has served and gone in mission. Amen. So as we come to prayer, let's remind ourselves that in our homes, we are still in the presence of God. As we look forward to celebrating the wonder of your birth, Jesus, we pray that you open our hearts to the beauty of this hope-filled season. Help us to take time right now to quieten our minds and be open to your love, your forgiveness, your strength your wisdom and your guidance. Houses this year are more ablaze with lights inside and out than ever before as we prepare for this particular Christmas morning. The trees are looking beautiful, the advent candles are lit, the presents are wrapped. But this year, our Christmas celebrations are different. The world is suffering. Fear, confusion, pain, loss of jobs, illness and grief for the loss of many loved ones as a result of the pandemic. Most of us are not able to go to church services and sing along with others the glorious carols that we all know and love. Most of us are not able to visit our families and loved ones. This year we have been confined to social distancing, working from home, meetings on Zoom, the world has drastically changed. But Christmas is coming. God has never left us. Jesus brings us new life. He has given us hope and joy. We ask that you fill us with your love, God, so that we may share your joyful coming this Christmas. 
Dear God, as we open our presents on Christmas morning, remind us of your greatest gift to us, your Son and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Our faith is the most beautiful present from you, dear God. Help us not be afraid of the coming days and weeks. Help us to live as a people full of hope. Make us strong in you. Help us, Lord, to listen this year to our neighbours, to the strangers we meet in the supermarket, to the lost and the lonely. Oh God, reach into our hearts and our world with your wisdom and grace. Restore what has been lost, heal what has been wounded, and guide us by your hand. Let us know the joy of your eternal peace. God, we pray that your love and forgiveness will transform the hearts of the world. Help us, Jesus, to grow our faith in you and to commit ourselves to you in a deeper way this Christmas. By the power of your Spirit, breathe upon us once more as we celebrate your birth. 2020 has been a difficult year, but we put our trust for the future, our hope and our prayers into your arms, Jesus our Saviour. Amen.
As always, we hope you found this act of worship helpful and encouraging and inspiring. We wish you a very happy Christmas and God's abundant blessing as we head into 2021. That in spite of the ongoing pandemic, we may know fruitfulness. We may know the presence of God. We may know his power at work amongst us. So let's pray as we come to a close. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you came to us as Emmanuel. Thank you that in you, heaven touches earth. In you, we have a saviour. We have hope. We know in your life and in your death that you show that God loves us and has made a way for us to be able to love God and live in fellowship. And so we offer ourselves that we might go as you have gone, that we might love as you have loved, that we might be sent, Jesus, as you were sent, and that you would use our lives to touch many others over this Christmas season and on into the coming year with your love, with your power, with your goodness, to the glory of your name. Amen.